What's up guys, Jason here of Vapor's Vault. Today I am going to be showing you guys how to install these pre-built coils into an RDA. Um, come August 8th, we're not going to be able to build for you anymore. So I just want to do a quick little tutorial video for your reference to, uh, to go off of. So if you ever pick up pre built from us or pre built anywhere else or even build your own coils, you, uh, you have some guidance throughout it. So today I'm going to be doing the fuse clapped-ins. Um, there are two 28 gauge wires wrapped with 32 gauge wires. Each coil comes out to 0.52. So when you put two in um, on this two post RDA, I'm going to be doing the Glacier 2. It's going to come out to like a 0.26. Um, so let's get started. All right, now we're zoomed in. Uh, tools I'm going to be using today is this Allen key to tighten the Allens, uh, the screw heads. Going to have two three millimeter inner diameter uh, screwdrivers just so I can uh, strum the coils and get them in there to fit. A pair of flat heads. I don't know if I'm going to need them, but they're useful. Uh, some snips to snip the weed, and then some ceramic tweezers to uh, help get the coils firing evenly. But let's break in here. So you got some fuse claptons. Two of these guys out. And then, like I said, they are three millimeter inner diameter, so they should slide right on this. And I already went ahead and loosened uh, the screw heads. You can see that in there. Let's zoom in. Focus. Now, when I install it, I'm going to go bottom right to top left. Now, you do have enough weed space on these coils where if you wanted to do another wrap to add more resistance, get more surface area, you absolutely could. I installed some yesterday, and uh, I think I got up to seven wraps on them. They come with five installed, but you definitely can. So I'm going to push it all the way up against the wall and then just tighten it. Go to the other side so I can hit it. I keep the screwdriver in there just so I don't lose the integrity of the coil. Um, push that up as close as you can. Tighten it up. Now I'm going to take this, pull it back, and when we go to fire it, we can always tighten up the coil. Oh, pull this back, make sure it's focused. Now, if I had more wraps on this, um, this wouldn't be so far away because the two leads are so far away. It's a, a kind of accordioned out on this coil, but we can fix that once we start pulsing and priming. Pulsing and pinching is what I meant there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now 
I'm going to snip all these leads as close as I can. Zoom out, throw out my Wismic, let's do a quick fit. <laughs> see what it reads. So it's reading at a .26 already, so that's pretty much where it's gonna stay. Um, so I was at 95 watts, I don't wanna be there. I'm probably gonna go down to about 40 watts. So you can hear the try and listen for the click. Um, I'm not going to sit here and feed a lot of power into it. I kind of just want to pulse the power into it to make sure I don't short out one of these leads or have the coil collapse. What you're probably going to notice right away is current is getting caught up in the wire we want our end result is having this coil fire from the center so it should get red from the center and then start to get red on the outside now a couple tricks you can do is fire it up red hot or start to get it red hot and then strum the coil then go on the inside something to remember you never want to be firing the coils and touch it with something else metal it's going to short out the coils they'll melt off you're going to have to start that process over so i get them red hot and then i strum them now i'm going to use these tweezers Ceramic tweezers, however, you can fire and pinch at the same time. Pinch that up. All right, I'm gonna let them cool down and let's see where we're at in terms of if they're both firing evenly. I see they're both firing from the center, but now we wanna make sure they heat up at the same time and cool off at the same time. So, it looks like that one's heating up way quicker. I wanna make sure both leads are tight. <laughs> I think these screws are kind of stripped out. I'm gonna bump this wattage up. It's about 75. So this one's still heating up a little quicker.
That's pretty close. So this one's still heating up faster. So what I'm gonna have to do is shorten the lead on this coil. So let's let that cool down. Unscrew that. That coil's still warm. I don't know if you can see it, but just running that lead. It's coming through. How are you? Good. You get a call? I did. Yeah, you found us. I need some juice. What kind of juice do you have, Mike? I all day made <laughs> so, if you like more cereal flavors for me, dessert, custard, menthol. Let's see where we're at now. Get some power through there. Another thing you want to watch out for is make sure your coil does not touch the post. So there's not much space in between there, but it's not touching. You can see it. There is still a gap. I'm gonna try and pull it away a little more, just to be safe. Yeah, it's not touching at all now. This one still wants to heat up faster. There it is. Good to go. All right, let's go out to normal view. All right, guys, the coils are installed now. Um, next step is going to be wicking it, but I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just leave a comment below. Uh, that was the first time I recorded myself building. I don't know if I skipped over anything, but if I did, just uh, drop a comment. All right, guys? Uh, we'll see you next time.